Hi, I'm Bruce Asher, and in this video we're going to look at EQ in Cubase. Now EQ is a tonal shaping tool. It allows you to change the tonal balance, in other words, the balance, the relative balance of frequencies across channels, across a whole group of channels, um, and also on inserts and send effects and all kinds of other areas of, of the program itself. And there's lots of ways of actually accessing some of those. There are EQ built into Cubase and there are plugins that allow you to achieve EQ. So let's dive into the project and have a look at how we can access some of those. So I have a project here. A couple of drum tracks with audio and some audio underneath this kalimba loop. I'm going to go into the main mix console. I'm going to close down this lower zone and open up the full mix console so you get a better idea of how all of this comes together. Let's play the track again. Now the first thing I'm going to do is actually show I'm going to open up the channel settings window and let's do that for the main master output. This means anything I do, any of the processing will happen across all of those channels mixed together. So here we have the channel settings for the main output. And I can click on this equalizer section. And this shows me the frequency spread of all the, of all the sounds, that mix, that whole mix, all the mixed elements, those channels, from low to high, their relative levels. So you can see there's quite a spe spread of frequencies across the whole spectrum. And this EQ itself allows me to manipulate that, it allows me to boost certain areas or to cut certain areas. It can't add to something that isn't there, so it'll only boost or cut what is already there. It won't add frequencies uh, that aren't actually in the, in the mix already. The simplest way of actually looking at it is actually with these use of the filters. So we have this little filter section here, and then we have these four so-called bands, and they work on different areas of the frequency spectrum. But let's just start with the filters because they get a really good, give you a really good idea of how you can manipulate the frequency spectrum. Playing the audio, and this is a high cut filter, which means reduces the level of the high frequency elements in the mix. And you can see how it, it shows what it's actually doing to the mix. It's actually carving out, reducing the level of those high frequency sounds. And as I push it right down, you can see how the spectrum change is updated to reflect that. So these peak levels previously were there, and now we're getting a mix which actually happens mainly in this, this, the lower half of the frequency spectrum. And I can open that back out again. I can also bypass it by clicking on this, activating and deactivating. I can do the same thing with the low cut filter. So it's removing the low frequencies. It's a low cut filter or a high pass filter. It can be a little bit confusing sometimes with the terminology. But the pass, if it's a high pass filter, it means it lets through, it passes through the high elements. That a high pass is the same as a uh, as a low cut. It's actually cutting the low frequencies. So you can see how I'm shaping the sounds. And I can actually use both of these together to carve out to only have sounds which sit predominantly in this area here. I can also change the slope, how extreme these filters are. And you can see how that changes the slope there. And there again, it makes it more extreme. It cuts out the frequencies above or below these cutter points more immediately. So the filters are one way. They are already a form of EQ. And they're a great way uh, with a mix of just removing clutter from the low end. If a sound isn't predominantly um, working in the low end of the spectrum, you can take some of it, take a little bit more of that low end out and it frees more room for the, the elements that do need to use that low end of the spectrum. Now, we come to these bands now, and these are distinct, these will these work independently, and they allow you to boost or cut in different ways. Now this one here, if I enable this, you can see I'm going to point here, and I can push it up, I can use the mouse, and it's enhancing, it's pushing up, it's pushing up the level of those frequencies, so around, here we are, 2.45 kilohertz, 
increasing the gain of those elements by 14.2 decibels. So I can drop it down. It's important to realise that cutting is far less noticeable than boosting the frequencies. So if you can, try and use EQ to cut the areas that you don't like rather than boosting the areas that you do like. There are no hard and fast rules, but that is a good place to start. Because EQ actually is used um, EQ is used to, for to tonal shaping, enhancing certain things in terms of bringing out certain areas, but it can also be used correctively if the real problems in certain things. You think aspects of the sound um, or the track or, the, or a bunch of tracks that you don't actually like. So we have these distinct bands and I've got the second band here where I can add another one and it will work separately and I can choose different frequencies and notice how the graph is updated to reflect this. It tries to show what the gain and the attenuation, the boost and cut will actually be. The low band here, if I activate that, you'll notice this looks a little bit different. It actually, it's not this bell shape that you get with these other bands. You can actually change that with the EQ. There are lots of different ways you can change what the shape does. So if we just click it to parametric, it then does this bell-like curve. So it'll boost or cut, but either side it will do less. And we can change how narrow or sharp we want that to be using this Q control. So essentially with a band we can boost or cut, we can choose the frequency and we can also choose how wide or shallow that boost area or that cut area will be. But of course then there are other types of filters like shelving filters which is the default for this low mode where it just carries on and level, it levels off, there is no rounding, it doesn't come back the other side of the frequency area with which it's actually working on. Uh, and you get the same with the high, where you can have a high shelf, and you can see how that works. So commonly, low and high, you will have these shelving filters, and it tends to be these intermediate bands that work in so-called parametric mode, which allow you to do these bell-shaped curves. But actually, there are a whole load of different uh, frequency, um, and EQ frequency types, um, EQ types, which will work on frequencies in different ways. And the more you delve, you will find out there's, there's more uh, intricate ways which you can play around with the frequency spectrum. So this is probably the most immediate way of accessing it in the channel settings window because it gives you this nice graphical display. Um, you also have the channel strip and this channel strip includes an EQ. And in fact, it's the same EQ. If you look at the shape in this window here, it's the same as that. So I can actually update and change these and it will change the spectrum. So that's another way of accessing the EQ. You can also, if you want, if you go into the project window, and I've selected that track, you also have this equalizer here as well. So you can actually change the EQ in the actual window uh, and actually play around with the EQ curves. They're gonna add things here. So there's different EQs in different places. And actually, so this is one for the, de the de dedicated to this particular kalimba channel. If I then go back into the mixer and I go to the kalimba channel and look at the EQ there, you'll see that the changes I've made will be reflected both in the channel strip and in the equaliser there. So it seems quite complex, but in fact all you're doing is you're updating the EQ in a similar way but at multiple places. Another area, another way you might want to apply EQ is using insert effects and in fact Cubase does include a series of EQ based insert effects. So if we load up the studio EQ as an insert effect across this kalimba channel, just to make sure that I'm not going to be uh, affecting it in two ways, I'm going to disable this, right, let's take this, this EQ out. And in fact, we can look at it again in the channel strip window. Let's load that up in the channel settings. Let's get rid of that there. Let's take these off, all the EQ going on there. So that's, that's removing the EQ in the channel strip and the main equalizer section. And that's actually is different to the insert. If I bring the insert into the window, you'll see this is a separate process. So whatever I do in this insert, is going to be different to the EQ elsewhere. They're distinctly different. You could apply multiple EQs if you really want to. Um, you could have it going on in the main channel strip and as an insert. Generally, the best thing is to try and keep it as simple as possible. So now I'm going to, I've disabled it in the channel strip. I'm going to use this insert and actually apply EQ across that kalimba sound. You can see how I'm bringing out some of those higher mid frequencies. I can bring out lots of the top end. If you go really high, you probably won't hear it because it becomes out, almost out of the realm of uh, the human hearing. And the same goes to the very, very low end. Your speakers probably won't be able to uh, allow you to hear that very low, those very low frequencies. You can hear around this 200, 300k area. It's this muddiness that you can add to the sound. If you want to remove muddiness from sound, you can drop a little bit of that out. 
you want to add a little bit of sparkle and air, you can go in this sort of 10K region. This region around here is often where you get vocal, vocal elements or harshest in guitars. So you might want to boost to counteract that with other sounds, or you might want to make space for some of those sounds by dro dropping this area out. So you can see we can use the EQ with the insert, we can use it with a channel strip, um, and we might even use third-party EQ plugins to give us more specialised features, uh, like EQ matching and other kinds of interesting things. So EQ and Cubase is as basic or as complicated as you want it to be. You can access it from the channel settings you, within the channel strip, and you have an EQ, dedicated EQ, for each channel in the, in the mixer and for the main output channel as well. And you can also have them, any channel you set up, like group channels or effects channels, will have their own EQ. Equally, if you want to use other EQs, um, including the ones that Steinberg include with Cubase, as plugins, you can load, uh, insert plugins and use those as EQs. Um, and you might want to use third-party plugins that might offer something a little bit more complicated.